think. Oh, hello everyone, David here. The guys at Pepper Jobs reached out to me and asked me to review their new monitor, the XT1610F Extend Touch. It has a built-in battery, so kind of perfect for taking on the move and getting that big screen experience. Let's take a look at it together and see just what it's capable of. Okay, here's some quick specs. It's a 15.6 inch panel with a resolution of 1080p at 60 hertz. It supports 10 point capacitive touch, has a built-in battery of capacity 10,800 milliamp hours, and it has quad loudspeakers built in as well. And they reckon you'll get about four hours of screen time and more if you turn the brightness down. Inside the box, we have the monitor itself. What I think is the soft carry case for it. Let's have a little look at this. Okay, yeah, that feels quite nice. It's very reminiscent of the um, Apple iPad. And then we have lots of connectivity. I think power. Uh, this looks like a USB-C cable. Nice little pepper on the <laughs> end of the cable there. It's a nice touch. Mini HDMI, let's have a look. That's a useful cable to have because I don't have many mini HDMI connectors. Now this is the on-the-go cable. So this will let you plug into the monitor on that side and then power some kind of peripheral on that side. And then this has a mysterious picture of a pencil on it. A pencil or stylus of some kind. Uh, let's have a look at the monitor itself then. Okay. It feels really nice in the hand. Yeah, so it's sort of sufficiently weighty. Um, told it's a matte finish. In terms of connectivity, we've got uh, what looks like power supplied by USB-C, and then brightness switches and volume. And then on this side, we've got on-the-go cable there, HDMI in and USB-C in. Okay, the Extend Touch from Pepper Jobs. Let's give it a try. Okay, so it took me a little while, but I think this goes on the stand like this, and then it's uh, got some adjustable angle there. Okay, first things first, let's try a laptop. Pretty standard use case. Um, I've got a razor blade stealth here. Um, I'm using the USB-C port for charging, so I'll take the HDMI. I'll take the HDMI output there and see how that works first. That's a good sign. One of the first things you notice is that the Extend Touch doesn't have quite the punchy brightness or contrast that a top of the range Ultrabook has. I did try fiddling with it in the on screen menu, but couldn't get it to quite match the Razor Blade Stealth. And I think that's to be expected in this case because the Stealth, um, its screen is rated at about, well, over 300 nits brightness, and the Extend Touch is at 250 nits. Um, also, the resolution is different, and it will be a different panel anyway. Um, so, if this is the sort of thing that bothers you, um, then I would really bear that in mind. Um, however, kind of looking at the screen on its own and not right next to a top of the range laptop, um, you kind of don't notice and don't mind as much. On PC, if you plug in both an HDMI cable and USB-C, it will pipe through the touch screen functionality as well, which can be useful. The Extend Touch has a USB-C input, um, so that should work very nicely with my phone. I've got the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, and it has DeX, which is like a desktop-like experience. Um, you can see that covered in one of my previous videos if you want to know more about that. Um, so the idea is I should be able to use DeX while I'm on the move, just using the batteries of both devices, or when I get to a hotel or a new flat or something, um, I'll be able to have 
a desktop-like experience on a big screen. So let's see just how that will work. And here we go, here is Dex. This looks great. And will the touch screen work? Oh wow, yes it does. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. So I've now got big screen experience on the nice 15 inch display. Um, touch is supported, which is just cool. All of my Bluetooth devices work as well. So I could really see this being kind of a valid way of working on the move. If you have like a very long train journey to make, you could plug in your phone and get working with this setup. Okay, it's not the loudest in the world, but I don't think anyone expected that. Um, it's just fine. You know, it would let me sample the kind of music I need to hear on the go, and I can hear it well enough. But yeah, I wouldn't use it to DJ at a party. Okay, so they say it supports uh, the Nintendo Switch directly without any kind of adapter uh, or dongle. Uh, so I'm going to plug uh, my Switch directly into the monitor and let's see what happens. Ah, here we go. Interesting to note that you can't use the uh, controllers while it's plugged in, presumably because it thinks it's docked and you can't <laughs> play the Switch while docked. Okay, this is cool. So little tip, you have to turn it off and then on again for it to detect the input. Okay, this is very cool. I love this. And, and the thought of having this um, on a train or something and being able to play 15 inch screen Nintendo Switch is pretty cool. And the thing is, even if you had a laptop, you wouldn't be able to do this because you can't easily plug a Nintendo Switch into a laptop and have it display there. So this is something you just couldn't do with a laptop. Okay, so uh, also worth noting that um, the Nintendo Switch will charge off the monitor. Um, so that could be a good thing um, if you if you're really all about games and you just want your Switch to stay as charged as possible, you can play it for presumably an hour or two, connect it to the monitor, then unplug it and still play it for another couple of hours on the device itself. What happens if I plug my other monitor, which is USB-C, into this monitor? Let's find out. And the answer is, it charges. So the desktop monitor is supplying power of USB-C and this port is a power input, so it accepts it and charges the monitor. So that means you can use the USB-C input on the other side and charge it at the same time. You don't have to worry about only having one USB-C port and potentially draining your battery. Okay, let's do something a little bit more fun. How does it work with, say, an Xbox? Pretty well, it seems. And so what about this on-the-go cable? Can I use this in Samsung DeX to get a USB-A port back. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's a little hit and miss with the USB devices. Um, some flash drives um, just refuse to be read, like this quite modern 128 gig one. Uh, this much older 4 gig flash drive is read fine. They're both formatted with NTFS, so maybe it's something to do with the amount of power it's drawing or something. Um, so yeah, not 100% 100 compatible. My portable hard drive um, isn't detected either, um, which is a little annoying, um, but something like a, a USB mouse works just fine. So something to do with um, power draw or some other compatibility means that probably the majority of your USB devices will work, but not all. And if you want to take just like a hard drive with you, you'll probably need some other way to connect that and get the data off it. I also tried connecting my iPad by USB-C without any other kind of dongles and it worked just fine. Um, it did letterbox the content to a four x three aspect ratio though. 
So, should you buy the X10 Touch portable monitor? Well, obviously, it depends very much what you're going to use it for. If you are a photo or video editor, I think you will miss those very high resolutions and the brightness and contrast you can get from a modern, punchy display. Um, but in terms of productivity, media consumption and gaming, um, I think it's really, really useful. And in particular, the connectivity you can achieve with Samsung DeX on the go, um, or a Nintendo Switch, for example, um, is really, really cool. And you can't actually do that with a laptop, even if you had one with you anyway. So it also competes quite well with the big name brands like LG, Philips and Dell, and their offerings they've got on the market at the moment. Okay, I hope this video was useful. If it was, then please leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.